Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. For today's protocol, we'll be studying the basics, streaking for single colonies on a petri dish. Before we start, let's get some motivation. This is what single colonies should look like on a petri dish. Okay, so we've got big, healthy, juicy colonies, uh, well separated and perfect for picking. We know that each of these colonies grew from a single cell, and so it's uncontaminated, it's genetically homogeneous population. Whenever you do an experiment in microbiology, you want to start from a single colony of cells just like these. Okay, so how do we get cells like these on your plates? You will need petri dish, like this one. This is a uh, standard LB agar media. You'll need an inoculating loop. I like to use the disposable kind. And you'll need a source of cells. So we'll go ahead and use for this uh, uh, my plate from last night. Okay. Most of the time, a new student, when they go to streak for single colonies, they'll take a blob of cells like this and streak their plate kind of like this. Okay, seems good, right? I struck. I struck, I struck a line on the plate. Seems good. So let's put that in the incubator and see what happens after an overnight incubation. Ugh. Ugh. Would you look at this? Look at this mess. This is a complete disaster. The cells are not separated. There's no single colonies I can pick. And it's hideous. It's ugly. Okay? It makes me want to cry. So the reason why the single line streaking technique is not effective is because we're not making use of the, of the plate, right? We're only plating cells in this very narrow line where we actually struck the loop, which means that the cell density is much too high. Okay, let's try that again, this time with a slightly more refined technique. I'll take my inoculating loop, just like before, take my blob of cells, there's no particular technique involved in choosing a blob of cells because we're going to streak them out perfectly anyway, so it doesn't really matter where they came from. Take my loop, spread a patch of cells up and down on the plate. So now, instead of thinking about a line, I'm thinking about filling in an area. I move the inoculating loop back and forth many times until there's a whole region of the plate filled, okay? So now I'm making use of all of the plate to plate my cells. Then, turn the plate, grab a piece of that region that I filled in, and spread it out to fill in another region of the plate. Each time I do this, I'm spreading the cells out further and further, until at some point I'm spreading them out so far that only single cells are being spread out onto the plate. Okay, let's put that in the incubator overnight and see what it looks like. Ah, okay, so much better, much improved technique. So we can see single cells this time we see that we've plated out the cells uh, over the entire plate. It looks pretty good. You could definitely work with this. I think you could do experiments uh, starting from this plate. I'm not completely happy, however, because to me it looks like that the cells are still too dense. It's relatively difficult to pick a single colony. Um, Everywhere you look on the plate, the cells are tightly packed together. So what this is telling me is that we didn't quite streak, spread the cells out far enough uh, to separate out individual colonies. We're still streaking out the cells at a too high of a density. 
Okay, so to fix that problem, we'll go with technique number three. Another Petri dish, another blob of cells. Another patch filled in on the plate. The only change I'm making this time is that in between steps, I'm going to throw away my disposable inoculating loop. So what this does, of course, is it cleans the cells off the loop, which means that every time I take a patch of cells, I'm starting with a completely fresh inoculating loop, and I'm not carrying over any cells from the previous streak. The effect of this is that the cells are getting more and more diluted each time I streak them, so that by the end the density will be very low. They also sell uh, metal inoculating loops that you can use and re-sterilize, like on a flame in between, uh, so that you don't have to generate as much plastic waste, but I find the disposable loops uh, very convenient. Okay, let's take a look at this. It's going in the incubator. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is exactly what we were looking for. Individual colonies struck out first at a very high density, a medium density, and then a low density until finally only single cells are being spread out onto the plate to grow into single colonies of cells. Okay. So this is perfect. This is ready to wrap up, put in the fridge, store for your future experiments. But before we end today's lesson, there's one more a uh, very important public service announcement that I want to make to everyone watching this video, which is about how you store your Petri dishes in the incubator and in the fridge. Petri dishes are always stored upside down. The agar and the cells go at the top, and the lid goes at the bottom. It's counterintuitive. It's very easy to make a mistake, but there's a very important reason why we always store Petri dishes like this, no matter where we're storing them, in the incubator, the fridge, it doesn't matter. And the reason is that if you store them the other way, the intuitive way, condensation will collect at the top of the plate, drip down to the bottom of the plate, and spread your cells around while they're growing, smearing them out, uh, and ruining your day. So, I've prepared an example. It's in the incubator right now. It's not pretty, so you might want to brace yourself. Okay, there it is. <laughs> oh, oh, I can hardly look at it. This is what a plate looks like if it is incubated upside down. So you can see the condensation collected, uh, the water spread around all of the edges of the plate. Oh, it's a disaster. Oh, God. Oh, it's gory. Oh. Don't let this happen to you. Always store your Petri dishes upside down. Yeah. If I can prevent just one accident, it's all worth it. Okay. That's all we've got today in synthetic biology. Uh, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.